What is up guys and welcome to another video. In this video we are up against Brits, we're playing as Hausa and we're gonna show you uh, we're gonna show you today a pretty interesting strategy where you can get a huge power spike in H4 utilizing the Yoruba allies and specifically uh, the uh, this card right here, the Kororofa Confederacy. So we're gonna follow along with this game. We're not gonna focus too much on the specific strategy uh, leading up to the Yoruba allies because it can be uh, really any strategy. But uh, I thought it was uh, quite an interesting game so we might as well look at the whole game. So we're starting off like usual, building a granary of course. We're gonna sell at 150 wood. Uh, we're actually getting some llamas here. And yeah, the begin is just quite standard, so there isn't really that much to look at. So we're gonna aim to build uh, 15 villagers, we're researching the village dogs, getting some treasures. Um, we actually managed to get quite a lot of gold here from treasures, which is just really good. But yeah, it doesn't really have anything to do with the Yoruba strategy we're gonna show you later. So here I'm actually aging up uh, with the... Uh, with the Berbers. Now uh, you can re you can actually age up with the Berbers uh, versus Brits because uh, well uh, Brits uh, never go for an FF and they do more of a semi because they want to boom in H2 and that means you actually have time to build the Berber nomads. So you can actually go greedy if you want to. You can also do the uh, FF if you want to and you're kind of open to a lot of strategy when you're up against Brits. So I'm gonna go for the Berbers try to get a bit of an uh, economy building. Now we're not gonna be uh, have as good of an economy as uh, Brits if they decide to boom of course but it's just gonna give us a bit of a boost but we're definitely gonna need to keep that tempo up if we wanna keep up so we're reaching up here and we're gonna also go ahead and send the uh, House of Kingdom uh, I do this most of the games and you send it right here after you pass the N so you get it in as soon as you age up so uh, when we age up with Berbers, we get that native embassy, and that native embassy is also gonna synergize quite well with the Yoruba strategy we're gonna employ in H4, as you will see. But yeah, now we're just aging up, we get the native embassy, and we get the token of influence. So here we have the token of influence. So one thing uh, that's quite interesting to note here with this HF, you get the 400 tokens of influence and this is actually quite good value because influence is a lot more worth than normal resources and the fact that you get 400 is actually quite good. Now we got the native embassy up here and we can actually go ahead and start training some Berber nomads. Now the Berber nomads have actually been buffed in the last patch because they're actually cheaper now. So if you didn't know, Berber nomads are uh, quite similar to normal villagers uh, but they do gather from natural resources faster. So things like gold mines, uh, uh, wood from trees and uh, of course uh, hunted animals and such things. But they're slower on farms. Meanwhile I'm just building a four brand here because I want to apply some pressure with cavalry now you really need you really want to contain Brits if you're up against Brits you want to keep him from building manors too far out and keep him from getting hunts on, on this map there's actually quite few hunts which is actually really good for me he has these two hunts and that hunt but then he has to go over to this side or go up here which is actually really good so I'm just splitting up my units here trying to do some raiding now, uh, as I said, uh, if you're up against Brits, this is definitely the strategy to go to. This or, of course, the fast FF, which I showed in the last video. Meanwhile, we're getting that economy up, we're upgrading the market text as well, and we're actually picking off a few bills here, which is actually really neat. And we're also going to go ahead and send the five raiders, just get a bit more of a mass. And we can actually use those uh, raiders uh, to uh, collect treasures as well as raid. Because these raiders actually have multiplier against treasure guardians, they twice damage against tre treasure guardians. So if you have few raiders walking around like this, it's actually really good to just take out the guardians. So here he is trying to raid me with a few uh, cavalry. I decide to focus on raiding him instead of actually going to meet those uh, hussars because the hussars are actually really strong in comparison to ra raiders. The Raiders have 180 and 22 attack. Yeah, these have 320 and 30 attack, so they're like twice as strong, uh, which is quite crazy. So I can see that has his cavalry over there, so I'm just trying to keep villagers away from this side. 
Meanwhile, I'm just trying to do some raiding here. I'm not doing a really good job. I should be migrating more, but at the same time, he's over here, so it's quite macro intensive right now. And I actually, go ahead and lose one will, which is a bit unfortunate. Also, there's actually two wills stuck here, but he didn't see them, which was really luck for me because I really can't move them. <laughs> So that's interesting. So I'm also going ahead and sending Palace of Amina. This is going to give me a bit more of a defense, uh, which I will need if it decides to push me in H2. Because with Brits, with a really great eco, it's always the fear of them pushing with uh, Hussar, Longbows and Mask. So I can see him going for a lot of Mask and a lot of Hussar. So I don't want to go ahead and add more Raiders now. That would, wouldn't be that good. Um, so instead, I'm trying to save up those resources for that HAP and just trying to focus everything on experience for now. I even have the palace on experience because I need those shipments in. And now we can actually go ahead and send the Akan as we usually do. And we can start training some javelin riders considering he has so much cavalry. But at this point, because we're so close to aging, we're just going to let him uh, siege these TPs while we try to gather the last remaining resources. Uh, we're gonna H up with Akan. You can H up forces with whatever you want. It doesn't really have anything to do with the Arubas, but uh, the Akans are actually just really great in H3 because you get those Akans and you can start building your mask quicker. So at the same time, it's in the, the Gananchi card, of course, and we're gonna try to build that Akan mask, which we will need to contest this. So fortunately for me, he's not uh, he's not adding in any longbows right now, which is great because it means that I can safely go into uh, both javelin and accounts. Uh, however, he has quite the mass here, so I can't really contest with that right now. So instead, I'm gonna opt to actually build a defensive palace here, just if he tries to push, so I have a bit more defense. Now, if you have two palaces up, he's not gonna go through with an H2 army. He's gonna need to H up, which is great, of course. We're also adding some javelins because, once again, he has musk and hussars, a, and nothing in that comp actually uh, actually counters javelins from range, which is uh, it makes them a really good choice in this case. So we're just gonna speed it up here. There's not a whole lot of interesting stuff happening. We're just gonna start building that Akan mass. Just trying to get a lot of units out. We're of course doing the imported cannons. We're sending the thousand influence. Very similar to the last build. If you want to see the Falconet Akan FF, you should uh, go ahead and check out the last video where we showcased that strategy. And I think if you're playing as Hausa these days, the Akan is just really good. So you kind of always want to incorporate the Akans in some way. However, in this case, we also add some javelins because I know he has so many Hussars. So he's hunting here and I can actually see that through the fog of war uh, that these carcasses are laying here. So I'm gonna try to push him on this side, try to get some build raids. He does manage to escape with a few of them. But I do get a few builds as well. Now here's actually has quite a few hussars, but I don't think he knows that my units are, are masks. So he just decides to charge right into them. And I'm actually putting the... Uh, 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 the uh, javelin riders in melee because in melee they actually have insane multipliers times 4.5 so they are like a pikeman in melee and you can see it just melts his cavalry and now we just have a lot more ma uh, musk and because mine are h3 upgraded because i aged up and uh, mine have just way better stats 200 hp 23 attack versus 150 and 23 attack and might also have the area effect, of course. So, yeah, we're just melting his army here. He definitely needed to add some longbows. He's getting the longbows in now, but it's a bit li too little too late. And we can actually go ahead and just pick off the longbows after this fight. Now, I don't want to overextend here because I'm macroing for that age up. Uh, so I'm not building a whole lot of uh, uh, units. I'm just keeping the Akan mass up from one barracks. I'm sending the Lefidi Knights, but I'm trying to macro for that HF because we're gonna go uh, for the Yoruba, as I said in this strategy. So we have a good lead. We have done some damage. We try to keep him off the hunt, so I know we're in a good position. Now we only need to get like a, a power spike to actually take him down entirely. So we're building those Falconets. We're sending in the Cav. 
And as I said, we're macroing for that H up and we're starting to near it. In the meantime, we can go ahead and try to just contain him, raid him. I just attacked on this side, which means I'm expecting him to go try to get a resource on this side. So that's why I'm pushing here. But I don't want to commit too much because as you can see, really close to aging now. Uh, we can actually go ahead uh, soon and sell a gold crate for the last resource, bit of resources we need. So I'm just trying to keep him off a distance. Uh, meanwhile, I'm um, uh, queuing that H up, and here is where uh, this uh, the Yoruba strat begins. So we H up with Yoruba to H4, and that's gonna grant us uh, a thousand influence, and it also will allow us the uh, Yoruba techs in the university, as well as the Yoruba units in the native embassy, as well as the palace, and. These Yoruba units, we're gonna focus on particularly this unit, uh, this unit, the Iso Rider. And, and this is a Lancer style unit, and it's quick training, fast moving, and powerful Lancer that slowly loses hit points. So, as it, it, uh, it, it, it's a bit like a Minuteman in the sense that it always loses hit points, but then it also attacks faster as they lose hit points. And this card actually sends in uh, fast as well and delivers six Yoruba allies. So six of those. So we're gonna each up here. We're gonna use the thousand influence we get from the each up, and we're gonna train as many uh, is warriors we can from the native embassy, and we're gonna send these uh, six uh, with the Kororofa Confederacy, and that's gonna mean we're gonna get actually eleven uh, is riders because you can only train uh, five from here, and of course these six uh, are like native units, so they don't count as your pop to your pop. So you can get eleven as max. And we're just gonna get a huge power spike. And the thing that makes this strategy so powerful is that it comes in so quickly. Like I hit H4 now, and he sees that, so he's immediately thinking, okay, I need to attack right now before he gets the upgrades. But the thing is, uh, the can they shadow tech, the falconets they shadow tech. We're sending in this card, it arrives fast. We're training these, they train fast. 160 influence, and here I'm already ready, and he hasn't even started attacking me. And as you can see, these units are just beasts uh, of unit. They have 320 hit points, not that much, but what makes them really tanky is their dual 55% resist. And they will just melt anything they come in contact with. And as you can see, their attack speed is increasing all the time it's, it's, uh, the, as the reload time decreases. So they just get more and more powerful over time. And with the, a 56 attack and a 1.5 multiplier against the infantry. Now they have a negative multiplier against heavy infantry, so you don't actually uh, they don't actually counter uh, heavy infantry in that sense. But because they're just H four stats and because they're so strong, yeah, they will just wipe uh, musketeers, especially H three musketeers. So that was how you can get a huge power spike. And what really makes this strategy so useful is the fact that you get it immediately. Like as soon as you hit H four, you have all the uh, riders ready to go and it just it's so unexpected from your opponent your opponent really don't expect you to have a, that many h4 strong units at a time also there's just a great price on these units they cost 160 influence and that's actually really good value considering if you take a look at Lafayette Knight this one is not uh, of course not upgraded to h4 but this one costs like 220 resources so it's more the Lafayette Knight is more expensive and uh, I would argue that the uh, Yoruba Easter Rider is even stronger than the Lefidi. I also want to mention there's two texts you get access to in the university. These two texts can be quite useful. Uh, the first one is the Yoruba Twins tech. This uh, tech costs uh, 1500 influence and it will create a copy of each Yoruba unit you have. So this is actually quite useful if you have a lot of influence. Let's say uh, I would actually have the 1500 influence. If I would have used that tech before, I would have went from, of course, 11 Easter Riders to 22. However, as the game progresses and you lose your uh, Yoruba Riders from the card, it gets less worth it because well, you, your build limit from the native embassy is only 5 and it's not really useful to use the tech on 5 Easter Riders. So I think that tech is a bit too expensive and it's hard to utilize well, but if you have a ton of influence I guess it could work. Now the second tech is the uh, Yoruba Wrestling. And it's uh, 540 influence and it makes the uh, units keep 25% uh, of their HP uh, as the, the HP dwindles down so they will stop at 25. 
and they also lose it slower. So that tech is actually quite good. Once again, it's quite expensive. So I think if you want to just overwhelm your opponent like this, you're going to need the influence to just keep training these guys. And then it's not that useful, but for a longer game, yeah, it definitely could be useful. And then another tip is if these guys are going down to zero eight hit points and you don't have a window to push, you can actually just use the Grias to heal them right back up again. So that was my tips on how to utilize the Iso Riders as Hausa and how you can get a huge power spike in H4. And I think this is just a really good strategy because there isn't a lot of power, really powerful ship in H4. The, the, most of them cost a lot of influence when you compare it to uh, the European civs, we get like two factories and a two heavy cannon shipment. So yeah, this is just a great strategy if you find yourself in a position where, it's, where you can actually H up to H4. And especially utilizing these units as shadow tech like the Akan and the uh, Falconets which then uh, automatically gets upgraded to field guns. So I hope you found this uh, video interesting and uh, until next time I'll see you in the next video.